So um, today we're going to be introducing a topic that um, people tend to have trouble with. Um, it's called uh, linear independence. Linear independence. Okay. Um, okay. So um, uh, I should say so. In some sense. Our goal, we have sort of a temporary goal. And this goal is to, uh, to create um, coordinate systems. For abstract vector spaces. Right? So in Euclidean space, right, you've got a coordinate system. Right? Every point in space you associate with, um, like if you're in Rn, you associate that, that point with n numbers. Right? Um, now if you've got an abstract vector space, uh, you know, there's no, maybe there's no immediate way to, to have a coordinate system for that. But you'd like to have a coordinate system. You'd like to say, this guy is um, you know, associated with a, a certain set of numbers. Okay, so you want to create a coordinate system. Um, it'll turn out that so you think if you think about Euclidean space, um, you know x y z, right? What does this x y z really mean? Well, um, x y z really means that you take x of one vector plus y of another vector plus z of another vector. Okay. Right, so that is, you're expressing, what this is, is you're taking your arbitrary vector and you're expressing it as a linear combination of these other vectors. Okay. You're expressing it as a linear combination of these other vectors. Okay, so you kind of hope, maybe you can do something similar in your abstract vector space. Right? You've got your abstract vector space and you say, okay, maybe there are these, you know, there's a set of vectors that I can use and express everybody I can express everybody in my space as, as combinations of these vectors. Okay, right? So um, what you need is a spanning set. I, I don't know if you've seen this term spanning. Have we introduced the term spanning set? Yeah. Maybe you know what, what I mean by span? What's a spanning set? Yeah. So we have the span. Here's the term span. Okay, so we know what a span is. Um, Right, span is the collection of, of linear combinations. Right, um, so let me introduce the term spanning set. Spanning set. Um, so you have uh, V a vector space and W a subspace in V, right, inside V. Um, uh, if the span of a bunch of vectors equals w, we say these vectors are a spanning set, are a spanning set of w. OK, so it's just the vectors whose span is w. Is this the same as like a basis set? Uh, it's it's not as, so basis is like a very special kind of spanning set. So yeah, we haven't introduced the term basis, but, but we'll get to it in a minute. Uh, in maybe next lecture after the exam. Um, so yeah, I know it's, it's, it's related to the term basis. Yeah. yeah. So for example, um, right, like uh, if I'm in R3 and my W is the XY plane, right, then the vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 are a spanning set for that plane, right? That plane, the x, w is, is the xy plane, so w is the xy plane, then these two vectors, right, these two vectors in the, you know, these two vectors here, their linear combinations give me all of w, right? So they're a spanning set for w, okay? Okay, so these guys are spanning sets, okay? So, um, <coughs> So what you're hoping for in your abstract vector space is that you can find a spanning set, right? And then express everybody as linear combinations of that spanning set, right? right. So in that way, you could create a coordinate system. Okay. And it'll turn out that 
um, that the key property, uh, what we'll need uh, for the coordinate system to be successful, to be effective, maybe, is what we call linear independence. Linear independence of the standard set. Okay. It will turn out that that you know if they don't have this thing called linear independence, then you run into some trouble. Okay. And the trouble is that you have multiple ways of expressing, multiple ways of doing it. Yeah, Connor. Sorry, going back a little bit. Yeah. What does it say? It says VA, V dot S. V of vector space. Sorry, when I say V dot S, vector space. OK. So um, yeah. Uh, uh, so maybe I should say like this. What we need is some sort of minimality, some sort, some sort of minimality uh, for the spanning set. We need some sort of minimality for the spanning set in order to have a good good coordinate system. And let me sort of give you a sense of what I mean by that. Um, like, if we are if we were in R2, this set, 0, 1, these two vectors, 0, 1, and, uh, and 1, 0, that's, that's a good spanning set, right? Because everybody can be expressed uh, as a combination of these two guys in, in one way. OK. But if I throw in this, I throw, suppose I throw in the third vector, negative 1, 0. And I say, I'm going to express everybody as combinations of these three vectors, right? So for example, um, this point, this vector here, right? I'm going to say, um, I'm going to call it one of the first guy and one of the second guy and zero of the third guy, right? But you'd say, well, why, you, you, could have, you could have said, I'm going to take two of the first guy and one of the second guy and one of the third guy, right? And that would still give me the same thing, right? And so you see that there's multiple ways. And I, I, I say, I want, I, want, I want to use three numbers. Right? You, so for some reason, I'm, I'm being dense now. I want, I want, I'd like to use three numbers, so I'm going to use three vectors here, right? But then you see that if I use three numbers, there's actually multiple ways of doing it. Right, this is a bad coordinate system. Right? I'd say, oh yeah, I'm going to call this guy 110. One, 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 and you'd say, well, but you could also call it 211. You could also call it 312 you know, three, or whatever. Right? There'd be multiple ways of doing it. So you could end up with um, a bad, bad coordinate system. And that's because this, this third guy was really not that useful, not helpful. Yeah, Ethan? So when you're saying like 1, like 110, one, um, I'm referring to the actual vector, like 1 is the first vector. And in the, in the three. Yeah. So if I if I suppose I created I say like I'd like to create a new coordinate system for R two, okay, and I'm going to do it by taking these three vectors and saying um, I'm going to call this point uh, the coefficients. I'm going to associate to this point the coefficients that I need to create a linear combination that gets me to that point. Okay. And you say, well, there's actually multiple ways of doing it. Why are you doing that? <laughs> Right? You're like, why are you doing that? That's not. That's that's actually not a good way of, of calling it. Right? It, it'd be like, like I, instead of calling you by your names, I'm going to also give you an, uh, give you other names. In fact, an infinite number of other names. Right? And so, um, right? Uh, right? Actually, actually, I almost did that to one student. Um, yeah, I just refused to call her. I, this was not a student in my class, but I refused to call her by her real name. One time, I said, oh yeah, you, your name is this. And she said, no, that's not me, that's somebody else. And I said, that's your name from now on. <laughs> <laughs> and for the first of the time, I've never called her by her real name. Yeah, OK. Yeah, OK, so yeah, some sort of perversity. <laughs>
Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So, okay. I don't know if, if this actually helps anything, but let's let's get to the actual definition. So, um, here's the actual definition. Um, we say the vectors v1 through the n are linearly independent. Linearly independent. Um, if uh, whenever C1 V1 plus C2 V2 plus C N V N equals zero, um, we have that C1 and C2 and C N, all of them are equal to zero. This is kind of a weird, weird definition. Okay, right? Whenever some linear combination is the zero vector, the coefficients must all be zero okay, in English. Like whenever you have a linear combination of these guys and it's a zero vector, all the coefficients must be zero. And the way of phrasing that is that um, the only way to realize the zero vector as a linear combination of the VI is the sort of the dumb way, the trivial way. Right? The trivial way, in other words, multiply everybody by zero and then add them together. Yeah, come. Sorry, so it's of the uh, as a linear combination of the of the VI. As a linear combination of the VI is the trivial. Okay. So Okay, so think like this. Right? If I have a bunch of vectors and I say, make a linear combination of them that gives them zero vector, what would you do? Just multiply everybody by zero and add them together, right? That would get you the linear that would get you the zero vector. Right? That's one simple way of getting the, of the zero vector. Okay. Linear independence says that's the only way to get the zero vector. Right? Linear independence says your set is such that the only way you can get the zero vector is that way. Okay. So for example, right? So for example, um, these uh, these three vectors are not linearly independent. Right? Because I can get the zero vector by adding this guy to that guy. Right? I can take one of this guy, one of that guy, and zero of that guy, and I get the zero vector. Or I could take zero of this guy, zero of this guy, zero of this guy, and I could get the zero vector. But I can also take one of this guy and one of that guy. Right? And so there's non-trivial ways of getting the zero vector. So these guys are linearly dependent. Okay. So if not linearly independent, we call linearly dependent. So these guys are linearly dependent, right? Because you can get the zero vector in multiple ways. Okay. Um, these guys, right, one, zero, and zero, one, are linearly independent, right? Because there's no way you can combine them, right? Uh, if C1, 1, 0, plus C2, 0, 1 is the zero vector, well, that says that C1 and C2 are both zero. Right? The only way you can combine these guys to get the zero vector is to multiply each of them by zero. Okay. So these guys are linearly independent. So the set 1, 0, 0, 1 is linearly independent. Can you give another example? Um, in, say, uh, P3, the polynomials of degree less than 3, remember? The vector space P3, polynomials of degree 
briefly was the thing. Um, the set one x x squared is is what dependent or independent? So first thing, what's the zero vector? The zero vector is the zero polynomial, right? The function that's zero everywhere. Okay. So you've got these three functions. Is there any way that you can get the function that's zero everywhere by adding these, adding linear combinations of these guys, taking linear com combinations of these guys? No, right? These guys are linearly independent. If if C one times one plus C two times X plus C three times X squared equals zero for all X, um, we must we have that C one, C two, and C three must be equal to zero. They would all have to be equal to zero. Right? Why is that? Why would they all have to be equal to zero? How do you know that? Can anybody justify that to me? Because I'm saying something, right? And maybe it's not completely obvious. How do you know that C1 is equal to zero? Well, C1 plus C2x plus C3x squared is equal to zero for all x. Why does that give you that C1 is equal to zero? Yeah, Eric. Because one x and x squared have like different orders, so you just can't. You just can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is what I want you to think about a little bit. Why why just why is it that you just can't? Uh, because it's a linear combination. You can't change the degree of it. Well, it's a linear. So we have a linear combination of of these three things, right? Yeah. We've got these three three guys here. I've got a linear combination, <coughs> and suppose we get zero. How do you know that the, that the coefficients all have to be zero? It's actually not, not so simple. You could say, so C1 actually you can get easily. You say, well, look, this, this, this expression is zero for all x, in particular for x equals zero. Okay, so let x equal to zero, I see that C1 has to be equal to zero. Okay, so C1 has to be zero is easy to see, right? Because I just, um, this is, Right? This is true for all x, so take x equal to 0. Why is c2 not 0? Well, one way to see it would be to differentiate this, actually. So use your calculus knowledge and say, let's take the derivative of this. This is some function that's equal to 0 everywhere. So if you differentiate it, you get c2 plus 2c3x is equal to 0. Right? So, so you get you know, c2 plus 2c3x equals 0 for all x. Right. And then and then let x equal zero. Right? And then you can differentiate it again. Your two c three is equal to zero. Well that tells you that c three is equal to zero. Right. So you can do it using calculus, say. Right. You can see that there's no way to combine these guys to get the zero function. Okay. That's sort of an aside. Um, <coughs> you don't really need uh, don't don't worry about that. If, if, don't worry too much about that. In any case, <coughs> there's no way to combine these guys to get the zero function, except by multiplying them all by zero. Okay. So these guys are linearly independent. Um, if I had something like this, one, one plus x, 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 x squared, these guys, this set would be linearly independent or dependent? Dependent. Dependent, right? This is easy. I can say, well, I can take, this is my, I've got four vectors here. Right? I'm going to take uh, negative 1 of the first guy, 1 of the second guy, 1, uh, I'm sorry, negative 1 of the third guy, and 0 of the last guy. Right? And I see that, you know, I get, I get a 0 function. Right? So, like this guy, I take, you know, you see that I get the 0 function. Right? So these are, uh, are dependent. If I take this, if I take these coefficients for this linear combination, I get the zero function. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, do you get to arbitrarily choose what coefficients to put in front of the vectors in order to give them equal zero? So if I if if I can find any coefficients, any set of coefficients that works other than the zero 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 uh, choice, then they're dependent. Okay, so I could have chosen like negative two to negative two zero or whatever. As long as I find one set that that one non-trivial set that works, that means that these guys are dependent. Yes. Yes, and we'll get to it, and you'll be like, "Oh, of course." <laughs> okay. Um, but okay. But let's. We'll we'll get to it in time. Okay. So um, so I hope at this point something is sort of uh, seeping, uh, like seeping through here, <laughs> uh, namely the idea that that dependent means that there's some sort of redundancy, and independent means a sort of minimality. OK, right? Dependent is, like, these guys are dependent. And you see that this 1 plus x is sort of, in terms of linear combinations, this guy was already in there, right? This 1 plus x is already a linear combination of the other guys, right? Over here, nobody is a linear combination of anybody else, right? There's a mini minimality here, right? Um, these guys have a redundancy. redundancy. Okay. okay, so that uh, notion is more precisely expressed in the following theorem. Um, so the here, theorem. Um, a set of vectors is linearly dependent. Is linearly dependent if and only if uh, one of the bi is a linear combination of the others. It's a linear combination of the remaining vectors. The other vectors. In other words, is in the span of the others. Okay. Yeah, on. So in the example we were talking about, how do we know that there's a linear combination? I just, I'm not clear on that. So we, we just made up one. We said, look, if we take this guy and add it to this guy and subtract off this guy, we get zero. Okay. Right. That's that's all we did. Okay. Yes. I was I guess I'm confused on what a linear combination is. Linear combination is just you know you take some multiple so you take you have some vectors and you take a multiple of one one vector and another multiple of another vector. You take multiples of vectors, you take multiples of vectors and add them, add them together. Okay, and so linear in linear dependence means that um, that there's some way, some non-trivial way of doing that and getting the zero vector. So you say, look, I can take you know one of this guy, I take one of this guy, I take one of this guy, and I take negative one of this guy, and I add them together, I get the zero vector. That's a linear combination, right? When I multiply these guys by numbers and add them together, that's a linear combination, and I get the zero vector. So that means that there's, these guys are dependent. So here we have this equivalence. Okay, what does linear dependence mean? It means that one of the vectors is in the span of the others. Yeah. Exactly one, or like one or more. Mm -hmm. So when 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 in math, if somebody says one, they and you say, uh, do you mean two? Do you, could it be two? I say. If there are two of them, then there's certainly one of them, <laughs> right? So that's that's how we that's how we word things in math. And okay. It's a little bit different from from the vernacular in English, right? If I say one, it means it could be more than one, right? It just means one, yeah. right? If, if there's yeah, yeah, right. So, like, are you saying it, 
it could be more than one? Yes, I am. You know, but I don't need to say that because more than one includes the concept of one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, I am. Yeah. No, it's, it's a good. It's a, it's a reasonable thing to say, and students say it all the time. Do you mean? Do you mean? Could it be more than one? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, okay. So. Okay. What does linear dependence mean? It means that. <laughs> it means that one, one of the vectors is, a is in the span of the other guys. Okay. And vice versa. Okay. So what does linear independence mean? Linear independence means that nobody, no vectors are in, no vector is in the span of the other vectors. Okay. No vector is in the span of the other vectors. Right? That's another way of phrasing this statement. And so this, this is really about that minimality or redundancy. Right? Dependence means that there's some sort of redundancy here. Right? One guy is already included in the span. Um, <laughs> uh, independence means that nobody is included in the span of anybody else. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's prove this. Um, okay. So. Uh, we're going to do it in the forward direction, and we're going to introduce sort of a, a logical trick. So you say, okay, well, look, let's say that um, the vi, vi from 1 to m, are linearly dependent. Suppose these guys are linearly dependent. Okay. Um, that means. There exist coefficients c1 through cn, not all zero, such that c1 v1 plus da 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 cn vn all equal to zero. Right? It means there's a non-trivial linear combination that gives you the zero. Making sure the microphone was on. <laughs> okay. okay, I wasn't hiding from you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay. Okay. So here's the thing that mathematicians do: will say, without loss of generality, assume that C1 is not equal to zero. So this, without loss of generality. We're going to assume that it's C1 that's non zero. Okay. This without loss, of general, without, without loss of generality basically means like we're not weakening our argument at all by saying that let's call the one that's, we know that they're not all zero, let's just assume it's this guy. Okay, and we're not, argue, we're not weakening our argument, we're not making a flawed argument by doing that. Right? Because one of them has to be non zero, let's just say that one was the first one. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't weaken our argument at all, logically. So let's assume that it's the first one. If it's not the first one, just rename everybody so that it is the first one. <laughs> right? Call call that guy the first one and call the other ones the second, third, etc. Okay. So without losing any any general any generality, let's assume that it's C one that's not zero. And all others are zero. What? And assuming that all others are zero. No, we don't know anything about them. Oh. Right? Right? They so uh, all we know is that they're not all zero, right? right. Okay. So, um, so let's since since at least one of them is non-zero, let's suppose that's that's called we, that one is C one. The others we don't know. Okay. So um, assume that C one is not, not equal to zero. Then uh, you notice that um, C one V one. If I move that guy, uh, if I move that guy to the other side, I get C two V two plus C one V n equals negative C one V one. Okay. And so, if I divide everything by negative C one, I get negative C two over C one V two. So divide everything by negative C one. And I get an expression of v1 in terms of the other guys. Right? 
I get V1 in terms of the other guys. In other words, V1 is a linear combination of the other guys. In other words, V1 is in the span of the other guys. Right? So V1, V1 is in the span of V2, etc. V2 is in the spine of the other guys. Okay, so what you see is that if the set is linearly independent, then one of the guys, at least one of the guys, is in the span of the other guys. And what you see along the way is that, you know, whenever you have any non-zero coefficient, then that guy would be in the span of the other guys. So there's you know, at least one, you know, maybe more than one. Could be two. Okay. 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 Okay, now we need to go backwards. Right? Suppose one guy is in the span of the other guys, show that they're linearly, independent, linearly dependent. Right? You see, this, the argument will just basically run backwards. Right? If one guy is in the span of the other guys, right? if V1 is some combination of the other guys, then that tells you that 0 equals negative 1 V1 plus C2, V2 plus CN, VN, right? But that means that you have a non-trivial way of getting the zero vector, right? Just bring that guy to the other side, you get the zero vector, right? So these guys, the VI, are then dependent. So the backwards argument, if you understand the forwards argument, then the backwards argument is easy. I'm sorry, why is it negative? Because I moved it to the other side. Oh, I, I subtracted it from both mm -hmm. sides. So just by saying that V1 is a span of the other vectors, it already implies that it's linearly independent. Is that so what we're saying is that, suppose that saying that V1 is in the span of the other guys. We're doing the backwards argument, right? We want to say, if one guy is in the span of the others, then the set is linearly dependent. Okay, so you say, suppose one guy is in the span of the other guys. In other words, it's a linear combination of the other guys. Then if we subtract this guy from both sides, we say that we can express the zero vector in a non-trivial way. We express the zero vector in a non-trivial way, because we've got negative 1 times this V1. Right? We could get the zero vector and not in the dumb way. So that means that these guys are dependent, linearly dependent. Okay, so um, let's go on. Uh, that's one way of thinking about, about linear dependence or independence. Um, here's another way that's really interesting. Okay. So, um, so here it is. V1 to Vn are linearly independent if and only if um, every vector in the span every vector in that span can be uniquely uh, expressed as a linear combination. Every vector in the span can be uniquely expressed as a linear combination of the VR, of course. Yeah? So, 
this is as a linear as a linear combination of the VI. Okay, so I underlined the word uniquely. That's because this is the uh, the main part of it. The main, the main thing. That's okay. um, so first, I'm going to say something dumb, which is that if you have a vector in a span, it's expressible as a unique as a, I'm sorry, it's expressible as a linear combination of the VI. Right? That's what span means. Right? If you're in the span, it means you're a linear, you're a linear combination of these guys. Okay, so that's not the interesting part. Right? The key thing is that it can be uniquely expressed as a combination of these. There's, only, there's one way to express it, and there's only one way to express it. Right? Everybody in the span can be expressed as a linear combination, but if the set, if these guys are linearly independent, then the, that expression is unique. So let me let's let's prove that the proof is kind of cool. You say, well, look, um, let's do the forward direction. Um, say V is in the span of the VI, and say that uh, and that. Um, V can be expressed as C1, V1 plus C2, V2 plus, plus C and V N. And V can also be expressed as D1, V1 plus D2, V2 plus D and V N. Okay, this is sort of bad English. Suppose you're in the span and say that V can be expressed this way and V can be expressed that way. Okay. I claim that C1 must be equal to D1, C2 must be equal to D2, etc. Okay. Okay. So we, we're starting off by right, right, so uh, assume that the VI are linearly independent, and we want to see that there's anybody in the stand can be expressed in only one way. Um, I don't know if anybody uh, has read ahead. Anybody read the book? Read this, read this part? So something funny happens? Okay. Um, uh, so we're hoping to see that all the coefficients are the same, right? That there's only one way to express it, right? You say, um, and we'll use linear independence. Linear independence, which says that there's only one way to express the zero vector. That's the fact we're going to use. Okay. Anyone see how we can use linear independence to get some information about the CIs and the DIs? Kevin? No, they should both equal zero. What? Uh, they're both independent. Well, if V were zero, then the uh, CIs would, yeah. all the CIs would be zero, and then all the DIs would be zero. So, okay, that's what linear independence means. But VI is not, not necessarily zero. But can anyone see a way of Expressing zero here. Yeah. If you subtract, great. Okay, so subtract. In that case, zero is this guy minus that guy. So C one, C one minus D one, B one plus C two minus D two, B two plus C n minus B, C n minus D n, B n. Great. Yeah, I'll give you a point on the exam for that. Okay. But then by linear <coughs> independence, what do you get? That Z1 
zero equals this thing. So what do you know about the coefficients? All the coefficients have to be equal to zero, right? All these things are equal to zero, so C1 must be D1, C2 must be D2, et cetera, et cetera, right? By linear independence, um, Ci minus Di equals zero for I going from one to n. In other words, all the coefficients are the same. C i equals di for on. Okay. Everybody okay? Okay. Let's do the backwards direction. Suppose every vector in the span can be uniquely expressed, can be uniquely expressed. Right. Well, zero is in the span. Suppose every vector in the span can be uniquely expressed as a linear combination, as a linear combination. Okay. We're hoping to see that the span must be, I'm sorry, that the vectors must be linearly independent. We're hoping to show that these guys are going to be linearly independent. You say, well, zero is in the span, so that means that it has a unique expression, right? So it has a unique expression. But zero, the zero vector is 0v1 plus 0v2 plus 0vn. So this must be the only expression yielding the zero vector. So that's, that means that these guys are linearly independent, right? There's only one way to get the zero vector. So the bi, bi are linearly independent. Yeah, Mariah. Wait, that show that like, every vector can be uniquely expressed? So we showed that one is zero vector. Yeah, so this is going the backwards way. We're saying, suppose you know that every vector can be uniquely expressed. We want to show that then the set must be linearly independent. Okay, so we say, well, we know that every vector can be expressed uniquely. In particular, the zero vector can be. Okay, but the zero vector has this expression, so that means that this is the unique expression, so these guys must be linearly independent. Yeah, come. Is there a reason why the i is in curly braces as opposed to just a bracket? Uh, we, we, for sets, we usually write, we usually use curly brackets. It's set, set notation. So. Okay. Okay. So, so we get this theorem here, right? If you're linearly independent, then everybody in the span is expressible uniquely as a linear combination, right? So if I, if I have some vector in the span, I know that there's, uh, there's not only some way to do it, there's exactly one way to do it, right? There's exactly one way of expressing that vector as a linear combination. And so this gives you your coordinate system that we're looking for. You say, okay, then everybody is associated with a unique signature, right? These, these n coefficients, determine exactly this guy and nobody else, right? And there's only one, one, one signature for, for the guy, right? I don't have multiple names for this, for this one person. Right? Okay, so that's what's good about linear independence, right? That you associate, there's a unique way of expressing everybody in the span. 
try to keep you over a little bit, but let me just say one more thing, um, which is to address Mariah's question earlier. Um, <coughs> how does one check linear independence? How does one check linear independence? So there's an there's a exercise in the book that says, are these vectors 2, 1, negative 2, 3, 2, negative 2, 2, 2, 0, independent? Are these guys independent? When you think about what's that asking, what is that asking? That's asking, are there non-trivial uh, C1, C2, C3, such that C1 times the first guy plus C2 times the second guy plus C3 times the third guy is the zero vector. Okay. So this is you know, this, this is what we've been doing a whole term, right? This is what we've been doing all term. Right? This is the same thing as asking, does the matrix does this equation, 2, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, negative 2, negative 2, 0, does this have a non-zero solution? Right? Does this have a non-zero solution? Right? In other words, what we're asking is, is this matrix invertible? Right? Is the matrix invertible? Right? Is it Invertible or not? Right? 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 Independent means that the matrix is invertible. Right? That there's only one way to solve this problem. In other words, the zero solution. Right? That's the same that's right? that's saying that this question has only one solution. Right? In other words, that the matrix is invertible. Right? So what does independent mean? <coughs> Right, so let me state that formally. I'm sorry, if you over. Uh, uh, A is invertible if and only if the columns, so A and N by N matrix, is invertible if and only if the columns are independent. Right. And if you recall that the transpose is invertible if and only if the matrix is invertible. Then you see that this is also equivalent to saying that the rows are linearly independent. Okay. Okay, so invertible, I'm sorry, linear independence gives you another way of thinking about invertibility. Or it's actually the same way. <laughs> it's just a sort of different take on it. Okay, that's it for today. Sorry to keep you over.